So the last thing I, I would like to talk about is the fact that many times I see I see students that they need to look at the fingerboard. Now, um, I must say also with Maestro Petracchi, we, 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 started, we, we, we made the exercise in Cremona, I remember. Uh, I, I used to, pra to, to practice in, in a dark room to, to be able to um, focus much more the, the attention of the ear towards what I'm playing than the, than the eyes. In some way, I think uh, there are two things that are much more precise than the, 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 the eyes or on the fingerboard. And one is the, the, what you hear, and the other one is the mechanical memory of the hand. That's terribly precise. So, and I want to, you know, one thing that you should be able to play and to talk if, if possible. It shouldn't be, you know, it's not the same pattern of the, of the brain. Because it means you are free to think music. You see what I mean? Sometimes I found that when I was younger, quite difficult to do this. But if you see some, usually when you see, some, it's quite normal in, in pop music, you know, because often you see, and in jazz, often you see jazz players that they sing their improvisations. You know, it's so close the contact from what they are thinking to what they play that they can sing why George Benson was great in this, the guitar player, you know, but not only him, of course. And also in modern groups, in rock groups, in pop music, you can see very often people playing an instrument and singing, no problem, even drummers. So that means it's something really useful, even in classical music, to this distinction, this freedom of the, the part of the brain that con has control of the technique and the part of the brain that thinks to something else, because the final approach of a musician, of a, a performer, I think you should get as far as I can listen to my playing like an external person. That's the only way in which I, I have full domain of what I'm doing. So we should, a slightly schizophrenic the thing, if you like, but we should have two sort of, two entities, one that is on top of the, the bass and the cares of all the technical part, and the other one that is just listening to you and giving a, f a musical feedback. So a part of the brain should think only to that. That's easier to say than to do it, because that will, would solve so many problems of intonation, of, uh, of speed, because you, you would have one ear that is objectively listening to what you are doing. I remember at the beginning that when I listened to my first recordings, they were always faster than what I thought to play, because of course, the, I was so involved also emotionally that, uh, you know, I didn't realize objectively the speed I was playing. But I can show you how powerful is the, the, the mechanical memory and the ear that I'll try and perform Bottesini first movement, a bit of it, with my eyes closed, you know, like... Uh... <laughs> I provide, I wasn't bluffing, I wasn't watching myself really. Uh, even in fast paces. <laughs> On the top, on the top one, but consider also this is not my instrument. This is a beautiful bass that Tom gave me here today to play. But you see, I, I wasn't watching myself. Everything was on my ear and in the mechanical memory of the of the of the of the body. Because I show you a little experiment. 
you know, me, sorry, I might move a little bit, Bora, but let's put this in, in the sort of, you can see the, the stool now, Bora, yeah. <coughs> let's put something a little bit far away, like, like that uh, thing of rosin, you know. Now, first, I must know where the rosin is, you know what I mean? But then, if I close my eyes, I remember where the rosin is, you know what I mean? Now I made it fall, but you see what I mean? Che, I, the, in some way, there is a mechanical memory that now I move the rosin, you know what I mean? Is there, let's make it more difficult. So once I sort of learn, that's learning, so I'm memorizing, but not just in the brain, all my body is memorizing the action. So now I close my eyes, wait a bit, let's hope, let's see. Well, I went very, very close to it. Let's do once more. Yeah, you see what I mean? Without looking, I, I know where it is. So you can imagine if you practice a bit, that's why it's really important what I was saying before, that when you practice, the, the position of the hands, they are like, you know, they must become like frets, so... Because the hand must learn, must learn exactly where, where to go, even in big shifts, they guard it. Else. Let me try something really tricky, aspetta. Yeah, that's better, you see, that's Brahms. That's a bit tricky. You see, I missed the first one not looking at, but then I learned. Then the, I, I learned where it was, and since then I'm sure I can do it more times. You see what I mean? The, the hand has understood where it is. And that's enough, that's much safer, much more powerful than actually if I put the sign there and I do it. You know what I mean? And uh, where is it? You know, it, it's slower. You know what I mean? The view, it, it makes things slower. So I think we should learn and trust our body, but we should take time, a beginning, especially when you start, uh, start studying an instrument, to really fix really well uh, the, 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 the positioning system so that you get automatically there. And the, when you play, you can think to music much more than to technical troubles. Okay, thank you to everybody. <laughs>